MGTV, η ομογένεια κοντά σα. Καλώς σας βρήκα. Η ομογένεια της Ιόρκης πάντα με τιμά, πάντα είναι στην καρδιά μου και πάντα νομίζω ότι έχουμε ραντεβού που με περιμένουν στο ραντεβού. Συνεχίζει το φεστιβάλ New York Greek Film Expo. Φτάνουμε προς το τέλος. Uh, αυτές τις τελευταίες τις μέρες κάνουμε μια αναδρομή στο έργα του uh, Ρένου Χαραλαμπίδη. The Hellenic Film Society is very pleased to be presenting the retrospective of the films of Renos Χαραλαμπίδης. Απόψε έχω έρθει μια ταινία προδεκαετίας ταινία, λέγεται Τέσσερα Μαύρα Κουστούμια. Με ηθοποιούς που αγαπάει η ομογένεια, όπως ο Γιάννης Γανέλης, ας πούμε. Μια κομμωδία, τα τέσσερα κουστούμια, μια ηρωνική ματιά απέναντι στο θάνατο. Όσο βέβαια ηρωνικός μπορεί να σε απέναντι στον παλδαμάτων θάνατο. Renos has been an important filmmaker in Greece for the past 30 years or so. Είναι ο Renos είναι πρωτοποριακός κινηματογραφιστής. Και χαιρόμαστε πάρα πολύ που έχουμε τη τιμή να δείξουμε τις ταινίες του και να τις ξαναχαρούμε μετά από τόσα χρόνια. Αύριο, σας παρακαλώ πολύ να σημειώσετε ότι στο Museum of Moving Image παίζει δύο παλιές μου ταινίες, τον Ομπάτι Στόρι και την καρδιά του Κτίνους και μεθαύριο τη μεγάλη επιτυχία αυτήν την τσιγάρα. Με μια συναυλία που θα προηγηθεί από τον Χρήστο Ραφαηλίδη, τον μεγαλύτερο βιμπραφωνίστα του κόσμου που είναι Έλληνας από την Κοζάνη Κρισμία. to be, um, have these uh, film scholars uh, speaking with him and sharing uh, some of the background of his films with our audience. Um, the, the thing about Renos, which is so unique, and you'll see his films and you'll hear from him later, just his, uh, he has his own unique voice, his own uh, style of filmmaking, and he really lives life as a true artist. And I, you know, I, You know, when you talk about that today, about how you want to write down everything, just so you're, you're always prepared, he's always thinking and living life as an artist, and that uh, makes him unique. Very famous in Greece, been working professionally for 30 years in theater, in TV, in film. He's not only writing, directing, and acting in his own movies, but he's constantly working. So uh, he's become a great friend. I've known him now for many years. I actually met him back in. 2007 at the LA Greek Film Festival for the screening of The Heart of the Beast, which we're showing on Saturday afternoon. But I've seen Four Black Suits also in LA, and that played to a packed house. It won the audience award, so the movie is very much an audience pleaser, and you'll see for yourself. Um, so at this point, I'd like to bring uh, Angela Benetis to come up and say a few words, and then we'll have Andrew Horton, who's literally written a book on Renos. This is a critique of his four films. It's called Renos Halalambidi's Cinema and Manhood as Radical Carnival. And he'll come here uh, after Angelo just to give you a brief uh, preview of Greek cinema and where Renos stands in the uh, Parthenon, uh, pantheon of filmmaking in Greece.
first of all, thank you all for coming. Uh, I see that it's a nice uh, movie we prepared for you. Um, I had a few things prepared to say, but I totally forgot about everything. So, thank you for coming to the So, this film is about, uh, is, is, about is, is, is focused on the process of, of, uh, of, of, of something instead of the end result. So, uh, it's, it's uh, something that uh, Renos uh, is, is very keen on what they're saying many, many times, also through Kabapis and some poems and things like this. So, uh, it's also about the process of making a film, and especially making a film with Renos. It's more about uh, working on it and, and, and having the pleasure of, of, of co-creating co this whole thing that uh, makes it a uh, great pleasure. And at the end, there's something there that you can you know, uh, share with friends, family, for, for life. So a film, that, that's the difference between theater and, and film, is that it stays there forever. So uh, what I tend to do is I have a few films the costumes being one of them, which I use as, as my balance. So I, I watch them, uh, it's, it's only five films, and I watch them over and over again uh, every two or three years, just to, for, for different reasons. It's not the matter right now, but I, I tend to do that, and I urge you to do it as well. Find a few films that uh, have different meaning for you and watch them over and over again. And uh, through that process, you, you will see that uh, when you do absolutely nothing, nothing on a film, they tend to change. So uh, your perspective changes, and then you see the film, the same film after a few years, and uh, they become totally different. So especially with Renders' film, this happens tremendously, and uh, it's something that you should try. And uh, the last thing I want to say is, is that this tonight is one of my toughest screenings. And the main reason is because uh, I have two of my uh, dearest persons in life. My two daughters are going to see their uh, father's first film. They've never seen a film I produced, so uh, I decided that they should. <laughs> that this should be the first film they would be exposed to. They traveled all the way from Athens to do this, uh, and thank them very much. And uh, girls and boys, enjoy the show. I just wanted to say this is the first retrospective that the Hellenic Film Society has put on, and I'm hoping that this becomes an annual um, event. It's uh, well, it's a, it involves a lot of logistics and a lot of work. There are just too many talented and interesting film films being made in Greece. And I think Renos, you know, you led the independent film movement in Greece with no budget story. You're the first uh, person to be recognized in this way by the Hellenic Film Society as a retrospective. And I think after Sunday, you know, this is hopefully will become a trend. Um, I'll bring up Mr. Professor Horowitz. Horton, sorry, my apologies, Andrew Horton. Um, please come up and say a few words. Thanks, Ben. What can I say? Uh, I've only been associated with Greece for over 50 years. I've only known Renos for over 25 years. And my short speech on Renos is this. Opa! Uh, but maybe I can say a few more things. Uh, I have worked with so many people in film in my 30 books, including George Ray Hill, Paul Newman, the list goes on. But Renos is special on so many levels. That's what I love and I hope you appreciate. Uh, and his sense of comedy, but comedy with a sense that has more than that. That's why the title of my book, uh, Renos, Carnivides, Cinema, and Manhood as Radical Carnival, uh, the approach that you can do so many different things. Renos has done it. You're going to see it tonight. I'm going to ask a question. Raise your hand if you've seen at least one Renos film. Uh, okay, that's about half of you, and half of you haven't. So this is part of what I love, too. Some of you are going to enjoy what you know already. Others, you're seeing Renos for the first time. That is a wonderful combination. What to say, folks, and this one of the series we're showing, we're starting with the latest of the four films uh, for Dark Suits. And that suits 
I think you've got the pitch. Uh, you've got uh, a rich Greek dies and leaves in his will that his body should be carried uh, from Athens to his village in a casket. Uh, that's an odyssey. If the odyssey is about going home, hey, this fellow before he dies wants to make sure that will happen. But you got a comedy. Four guys in black suits carrying a coffin for several hundred kilometers through Greece. Panayim. What are you going to do with that? That's what we got going, folks. That's what's happening. And in my book, which uh, they're saying will be available for you on Sunday, they said, but as they will have copies out there for you, which was just published last month. Uh, and uh, in the intro, I say, uh, to think about this film, and you're about to watch it, think of Aristophanes and think of the Marx Brothers. If you're looking at comedy in Greece, Aristophanes was there early on. And I love to say, what did he do? What do you do when you got a war going on? You try to find a story that will shake people up a bit. OK, uh, Lysistrata, what if women go on a sex strike and it stops the war? Wow, everyone got the message. Great comedy. Marx Brothers, what do you got? You got four crazy guys who can do anything they want to do. That's the Marx Brothers. Well, what's wonderful about Reno is he combines both of those spirits. There's a spirit of Aristophanes in him. Let's take on topics and see what we can do. And then there's the sense of the Marx Brothers. Let's have fun and do things. Carrying a coffin and going through. You're getting to know those characters. You're getting to know them. And you're getting more than just, some, you're getting some good laughs too. And you can make a list of the funeral comedies, four weddings and a funeral, and the list go on about how to do that. Some of you have already heard me say, part of my life was spent not only in Greece, but over 20 years in a country called New Orleans. <laughs> what do they know about carnival? Yeah. What do they know about death? Have a celebration of those people. Have a big parade and celebrate the life. Uh, so that spirit of the passing, they're not just something sad. It can be something great and joyful, too. Uh, Renos pulls it all together. Enjoy it, and we can discuss it further with that. But, well, I've got questions, but we should save till after the film. But maybe you might ask one question. Uh, when did you decide you really wanted to do this film? So, this is the, the first question before the movie. I decided to make this film when I was very close to be 40 years old. And I found <laughs> out that uh, the time of living is not forever. Mm. And I said to myself, Reno, prepare yourself for the end. Maybe it will be too far away, but be prepared. It's a kind of um, combination between philosophy and comedy. Thank you, Adi. In a brief minute, I just wanted to let you know, after the screening, uh, we have with us David Schwartz, who was the former curator here at Lomi for 33 years. He's now, he, he, we welcome him back. I know you're still actively involved with the museum, and we appreciate you having here. We've had a long partnership uh, with this uh, museum and, and the folks here for many years. And uh, David's now the founder of, of cinemaprojects.net. And afterwards, they're just going to come out. Enjoy the film. <laughs>
free to express yourself even if you don't have money and uh, you don't have the right film, have 16 millimeters film, or uh, to try at the editing new things. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the themes of the film. The film is so concerned with money. You know, we think it's about yeah. money, but it's, you know, it's really not. At the end, the journey is not about money. Who, but, cares, who cares about money at the right. end? Exactly. At the end of the day and at the end of the journey, at the end of the Odyssey, right. uh, who cares about money? Now, but I do have to ask you, this film came out in 2010. So yeah. on one hand, it is connected to the Odyssey, which is like one of the oldest yeah. stories in Western civilization, but it's also uh, made right in the midst of the economic crisis. Yes, exactly, at the beginning. Uh, the film, we saw the film exactly at the beginning of the big crisis in Greece. Right. Uh, that's why I put the, the coffin coming out on the stairs in front of the, the Greek parliament. And of course, even though this say begins, nobody knows when it's gonna finish. Uh, and in Greece, we have a big Odyssey for 10 years disaster. So how, how are you able to make this? You, you're, um, as George said at the beginning, and Andrew, you're very, um, you know, you do many things, you act, I think you've acted in, a, in about 50 films, you yes. have your daily radio show. Every day, yes. When do you decide um, that you're gonna direct a film, and then how does it come together? My nature yeah. is uh, the storyteller. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. And I don't decide for the films. The films decide for me. Mm. They said, now direct the film. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is true. And uh, or the, my producer used to say, now direct the film. Um, it, it, I feel that it's my, it's my nature. I have to follow my nature. This is it. I play on TV. I give my radio show. I play on theater. I'm a stage actor. And uh, suddenly, uh, at periods, I feel uh, the necessity to, to shoot a film. Yeah. I, do, I do love the piece of the, the Hamlet, the production of uh, the Hamlet, Hamlet yes. there, so. You know, it's my, my trauma. I, I feel nobody trusts me to play Hamlet, nobody. I, I, I believe that I'm a Shakespearean actor, you know, I'm a serious actor for the theater, but until yet, until today, uh, the National Greek Theater, I tried many times, they don't trust me to play Hamlet. Uh, <laughs> so I want to take revenge. <laughs> one, yes, day, one, one, day. one day I'm going to play, yes. And uh, of course, uh, the line about the skull. Mm. That, uh, that I want my skull to be at the National Greek Theater after my death for a revenge, to be on stage forever. <laughs> Can we hope that's a long time? I hope so. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Okay, so, what, so you say the film speaks to you to you know, comes to you in a way, but where did this one start? Did you have the idea of the, of the, the you know, the concept of the movie? Yeah. It's, not, it's a kind of far, far-fetched concept, you know, yeah. that they're gonna go on this long journey with the, with the casket. Uh, so where did, the, you know, where did the idea come from? Usually I had a, a very early midlife crisis. Mm. I have the midlife crisis at 40, when I was 40 years old. Uh, uh, yes, it was very early. Now I know it was very early. Then I thought that it was the end, but it was the beginning. So it was a kind of, uh, I tried to deal with myself with death, with the end, uh, with my dreams that I never did it, like Hamlet, and all that stuff, and I make this film. But I always love Odyssey. And this is an Odyssey uh, without a ship, without a boat, but with a coffin. And uh, with somebody who never met his crew. Mm. It's obviously say, uh, with four black suits. Uh, that's the truth, that, that's the reason I did the film. Uh, my midlife crisis came very early. Yeah. <laughs> now, the film, like a, like a road movie, it feels like things happen along the way that are unex unexpected. So it has mm. a feeling of almost being improvised, but it, I'm guessing it wasn't really. Uh, it's yeah. not improvised. It, it, yes, uh, it was not improvisation too much. Right. So, but how did this story come about? Like, how did you add the? You know, the, I love the scenes in the carnival. Um, you know, some of the el different elements of the story. Yeah. I, tr I tried. I tried to put. I was thinking, what is Greece? Mm. A deep period. Greece is the festival, the dancing. Uh, Greece is a. Uh, to be drunk and get lost forever at the fields, this. And uh, that's how I made up my mind, 
how can I make a Greek film without being sad? Uh, to have dancing and it, it's to be old-fashioned and at the same time not old-fashioned. And I thought that this dancing scene uh, could be a unique, uh, an authentic Greek uh, scene. Maybe we have Greeks today here and maybe they recognize it. Yeah. All the Greeks have danced to Panigiria like this. <laughs> That's um, right. The, so the idea that the film would end with this woman and, and the dancing scene, which is so great, Thank was that you. always how you would, were going to end the film? Yes. Yeah. I was dreaming to make a film dancing with a coffin. <laughs> uh, I, I found it very uh, artistic. <laughs> And very, it has a hope that uh, nothing <laughs> finishes at the end. Yeah. Until you're, until the end will come, and somebody will care about the last dancing, not you, somebody else. Uh, I, I, I truly, I, I believe it. And especially if it's a love story, it's if uh, somebody promised to hear that I'll be back and I'm going to dance even if I'm dead. I find it very sweet and very hopeful. Um, I want to ask about the way that you work as a director. You, you, the film has a very strong visual style. You know, they're, they're really, every composition seems to be, you know, sort of really worked out by you. And um, there's like a, a deadpan style and a real like sense of where you want to put the camera. Yeah. So it's not just loose, uh, the way you shoot it, but how, like, how do you work? I work uh, with my uh, cinematographer, I'm the guy who likes to talk very much with the people who work with. Uh, I don't trust luck. Mm. I don't. Tr I, I, I'm not a director who trusts uh, luck. And uh, actually, I'm a control freak. But I'm a secret. I'm a secret, a hidden control freak. I try to manipulate uh, smoothly. I'm a, sm a smooth operator. And uh, I, this uh, I prepared for a long time, and um, that's why I don't like my mistakes because I I, I believe that I was very good prepared. Yeah. Uh, of course, you don't know my mistakes. I know my mistakes, and after ten years, I find out that they are beautiful mistakes. <laughs> and thanks God, I did them. What's an example? Like I I, I can't think of. Like, uh, tell us a mis like what you find to be. I'm a gonna mistake. I'm gonna tell you a mistake. <laughs> Listen. Okay, this is my secret. The car is coming. And I see, uh, and I, I show you the tree. He stand up, and the car is coming. Mistake. First, it, ha it, it, it had to be the car is coming, and after that, he has to stand up. Mm. <laughs> that, okay, of course, you don't understand what I mean, but I understand. Something small things. Okay, so I bet, like, nobody here like Not, yes, of course, back, but I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> Unless I give, yeah. Yes, I saw it. Okay. It's a small, small <laughs> thing. So you don't, you need, you don't, you don't understand what you're doing. But maybe it would not be so good if I did not don't did it. Right. I don't know. Do you show up? Uh, you know, have you like worked out every shot like with storyboards? I don't use a storyboard, okay. but, but I, I'm writing mm. uh, as literature. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I write it. I have a diary. A diary at the uh, at the shooting. Yeah. My thoughts and uh, you know, I st always I find time at the shooting to stop for a while and to write what I'm doing, where I am, what's going on. But during the shoot, during yeah. the actual production. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It helps. It really helps. Um, you know, one of the things that you cited as an inspiration for the film in your process was was this poem called Ithaca. So of course. Funny, if you could tell us about that and what how that was important to you. You know the poem of Kavafi Ithaca? Of course you know it. Yes. It's a poem that tells us that they don't care about the end of the trip, care about the process. Wish the road to be a long one. Don't hurry up to be at the end. Because at the end, Ithaca is poor, but it's honest. You don't care about Ithaca. You are rich from the experience. You are rich from the trip. Ithaca has nothing to give you more. And the Ithaca is in the film. The four, the four black suits at the end are rich 
because they found out what they really want, they found out who I really are, yeah. and at the end they found out that who cares about money. Well, there's a point in the film, you know, sort of early on, where they realize that the will was fake, and you like you think, why do they go even go on after that? But you figure out that they are just having a good time. But the dead even man, even though they they're always fighting, but they yeah, the dead man, even if he doesn't talk. Mm. In his way, he talked to them. Mm. He pushed them to the journey. Uh, he pushed them to the night of the festival, mm. the dancing night, where everyone has to talk with his ghosts, with his past, with his present, with his future. It's a dead man who's a maestro, a maestro of a small orchestra, of the four black suits. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, I do want to hear about how you cast the film. The actors are all... They are friends of mine. Oh, they're all friends. Okay. <laughs> to be honest. And are, are they... <laughs> they are friends and I wrote everything for them. Okay. Uh, we are friends. They know me, I know them. Uh, they trust me, I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> because her director uh, I'm ready for a fight, uh, but uh, they really, they're really open, free, and kids. Mm. And I said, listen, guys, fall into my trap, because as a director, I put traps for the actors, and they fall in, and they enjoy it. Um, the woman at, at the end, yes, is, yeah, I the mean, woman. she is. Right, like her. She's it's so that, important that you that you pick the right woman for that, and, and yeah. it sort of makes the whole maybe, journey Maybe make sense. in English you don't understand. She's a very old-fashioned actress. Mm. She's acting a little bit too much, and I like it very much mm. because all human beings, at the very important momentum of our lives, we don't understand that we have something theatrical by nature. Um, that's why I like her very much. She was a dancer when she was very young. Mm. Now he's 90 years old. She's not alive anymore. Mm. And uh, I didn't want her to dance. I said, oh, it's okay, we dance. I said, are you serious? I'm a dancer. And she started dancing and... But anyway, uh, the fat lady, which is an amateur, remember, the gorilla girl, yeah. I am the gorilla. You know, in, in, inside the gorilla, no, like, I was because I trust nobody to play the gorilla, and I was the gorilla. Uh, it's another secret of the movie. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, because I, I said to myself, Renos, it's very important to be a very aggressive gorilla, and nobody could understand what I mean. Poetic and aggressive gorilla, they look at me, how can a gorilla be bright, aggressive, and poetic? And uh, I thought that the way I, I played it, or not, they, 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 or not, or uh, the gorilla was not poetic. The, the scene of the gorilla. You did a great job. Oh. The gorilla. The, the gorilla. Was, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the music is so memorable. It's my, uh, the, the music. The, the, the theme that keeps reoccurring is so. Do you know Philip Glass? Sure. Yeah. Yes. In my mind, I want to be Philip Glass. <laughs> so <laughs> again, 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 again. Oh, oh, okay. oh, the repetition. The repetition, yes. Yeah. But it's, it's, did you? But you wrote. I, I'm the composer. Okay. Uh, and I whistle. Mm. It's my whistle, yes. And of course, I use a theme from uh, Jean Bizet, the fisherman of Pearl, Pearl Fisherman. Oh. And uh, I love, I love Philip Glass. The same, the same, the same, the same, the same. Of course, with whistling, maybe it's not so good as with a big Berlin orchestra ensemble, but uh, it's very minimal. Whistling is a more minimalistic way to express yourself through music. Yeah. Yeah. And the guitar, of course, I play the guitar too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a personal feel. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, I take a few minutes to do audience, some audience questions. Of I'm sure some of you have questions. So pop, pop in, I'll repeat questions if anybody wants to ask. Go. Uh, 
they say that perfection, perfection is, is the enemy of uh, doing something. And I realize that you're a perfectionist, I can tell, that would you stay awake uh, uh, foretelling something for the next day? Did, did you wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, that's a fantastic idea, I'll do it tomorrow? Yeah, did you have such experiences? I, I had this experience, uh, but not at the shooting, because I prepared the shooting a long time before. Uh, I don't trust inspiration very much. Um, I, I, in movies, I trust myself. I, I love the process. I trust myself at the process to prepare the film. But when I got the shooting, uh, I have to be very good organized. Hmm. Sorry, maybe I destroy the myth of the <laughs> film, but it's a business. Yeah. Right here. Uh, sorry to misunderstand uh, what you said before. I had misunderstood it, I guess. Uh, the fact that you said that the gorilla was very <laughs> aggressive and poetic at the same time. Now, I did understand and I did see the, poetic, the, the aggressiveness, but the poetic where did, that, where did that come in? I'm not a, an artist and I don't yeah. understand it. I, I, I didn't manage to do it. <laughs> that was my target, my goal. Poetic and aggressive. I did the aggressive and finally I couldn't do the poetic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Uh, very simple. Why Costa Rica? Uh, why Costa Rica? It's a beautiful name, Costa Rica. <laughs> Mystery. Ah, is it? it? Like a dancing day, I'm coming from Costa Rica. Beautiful country, too. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. But everybody, the name is beautiful, Costa Rica. Isn't it? And too far away for Greeks. Right. Costa Rica is very far away. A beautiful place far away, and the dead man who is coming, who has dyed his hair black, and he's coming from Costa Rica dead. And the gorilla, of course, who... It might, uh, uh, yeah, no. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is looking right there. Hi, may I ask you something? When yeah. you said Costa Rica and they were joking around, the feminist here, yeah. then you said something about Castro. Was that a joke again? Uh, they, they, they do, uh, of course, Castro is not at Costa Rica, yes, it's so at Cuba. So you were doing like a joke for. No, they are jerks. They know nothing, they're idiots. <laughs> Yeah, they're idiots. They believe that Castro was at the Costa Rica. Like Costa Rica is a communist country. No, they think that Cuba is the same Cuba in Costa Rica. Yeah, like they're silly people. They're four silly people. They're not clever. Yeah. They're nice guys, but not clever. Like but not exactly idiots. Yeah. Something in the middle. Like us. Everyday persons. <laughs> but in real life, they're smart, right? As personalities? <laughs> yes. You know, are you... With a low-budget film, often you don't have a lot of time to rehearse. But so, could you talk about just uh, working with the actors? I, I know them who have worked at the past many times together, so we know each other very good. And they are very quick. And they understand me. How long was the shoot? How many uh, days? Twenty-three days. Thirty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-three days. Twenty-three days. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Indeed. And no questions. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Well, um, Thank, well, and please come back. This is just the beginning. We're going to be journeying back in time to see your three other films that you yes. directed. So please come back over the weekend. Um, thanks so much, and, and thanks to all of you for being here. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, David. In New York, it's a very good place. Pais to Shell, Nash. Γιατί είμαστε, έχουμε DNA κοσμοπολίτικο εμείς οι Έλληνες. Και όπως η Νέα Υόρκη είναι κοσμοπολίτησα, έτσι οι κοσμοπολίτες είμαστε κι εμείς. USA. Οι δραστηριότητε τη ελληνοαμερικανική κοινότητα με βίντεο και πλήρε ρεπορτάζ. Επισκεφτείτε την ιστοσελίδα μα mgtvusa.com.